Hi, I'm Susan Javinsky with Morningstar, and welcome to Dividend Stock Deep Dive. I'm here today with David Harrell, editor of Morningstar Dividend Investor, and we're going to unpack the performance of dividend stocks so far in 2023. And I'll also get David's take on the dividend prospects of four high dividend stocks that Morningstar's analysts think are undervalued. Good to see you today, David. Great to be back. So uh, let's start out with a little bit of a recap about how dividend stocks have performed this year relative to the broader market. Sure. So, you know, with the usual caveat that as investors, we shouldn't be too concerned or worried about short-term performance, uh, what we've seen is really a reversal of fortune for dividend stocks relative to the broad market in 2023. Uh, as you know, last year, pretty bad year for the U.S. equity market as a whole. Uh, U.S. equity market was down around 18% on a total return basis. Uh, but dividend indexes and dividend-oriented portfolios, uh, much better performance. Some of them actually you know, eked out a, a, a slight gain in 2022. Uh, so far in 2023, for the broad U.S. market, depending on which index you look at, uh, we're up around 9% for the year. Uh, but dividend indexes are, are kind of flat for the mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. So then what's been driving that sort of underperformance this year? Well, we can look at it through a couple of different lenses. Uh, one is investment style. Uh, so in addition to being a, a bad year for the overall stock market last year, it was a horrible year for growth stocks. Uh, whereas in 2023, we've seen some phenomenal returns uh, from some stocks you would find in the growth column of the Morningstar style box. Uh, stocks like um, NVIDIA, um, Salesforce, uh, Microsoft, Apple are all up for the year uh, by double digit amounts. Uh, so I, I think when we look at um, the growth column as a whole, it's, it's up around 14% for the year, uh, whereas value stocks, with about the value column, which is more likely to be home to dividend payers, uh, is lagging by about 12 percentage points. Uh, so th there's definitely been a shift so far in 2023 where growth stocks are outperforming. Uh, we can also look at it through a uh, sector lens, although there's a fair amount of overlap mm -hmm. with sector and investment style. Uh, so we're seeing sectors like technology and communication services uh, up over 20% for the year to date, uh, whereas some of the sectors where you know, we're more likely to find our dividend payers, utilities, uh, energy, healthcare, financial services, uh, those sectors are all actually in the red for the year to date. So let's talk a little bit about bond yields and, and dividend paying stocks. You know, bond yields are certainly far more attractive today than they were 12 months ago. So why, why might investors be considering dividend stocks when bond yields look as good as they do? Sure. So, you know, as you say, it's a very different situation than we were in, you know, 12 months ago or a year and a half ago, uh, where bond yields were low uh, and investors really couldn't expect anything at all from a cash investment. Uh, you know, right before we began taping today, the Fed announced its latest rate hike, uh, a quarter of a percentage point. I believe that was the 10th consecutive raise. Uh, so the federal funds rate is at its highest level in, I believe, 16 years. Mm -hmm. uh, bond yields are much higher. And investors can actually get a pretty good return now, even from just like a savings account mm -hmm. or, or CDs. Uh, so certainly more options for investors seeking current income today than they had 12 months or 18 months ago. Uh, but you know, as to why dividend stocks in this environment, um, you know, I, I would say it's not just about current income or yield. Uh, and with dividend payers, you have both the, the current income coming from those dividend payments, but also the pr prospect of uh, capital appreciation, mm -hmm. uh, particularly if you're able to buy high quality companies uh, that are undervalued currently. Uh, I'd also point to something, um, you know, Warren Buffett of, of Berkshire Hathaway. So, uh, you know, the company famously does not pay a mm -hmm. dividend, uh, but in the most recent annual shareholder letter, uh, Buffett was praising dividend stocks and how the uh, income from those stocks had benefited uh, Berkshire Hathaway's investment portfolio. So David, let's pivot a little bit and talk about the dividend prospects of some high yielding stocks that our analysts think are undervalued. So, um, you know, this is their position on valuation and you can talk a little bit about what you think of the dividend. Um, our first stock is Altria Group. Altria is, of course, you know, one of the big tobacco companies in the United States. And uh, the company's trying to pivot its portfolio more towards tobacco and nicotine products to sort of mitigate the fall off and, of course, the decline of cigarette sales. Uh, now, we think the company has 
has carved out a wide economic moat. The stock offers a forward dividend yield in excess of 7% as of today. And the stock looks about 9% undervalued, according to our, our analysts. Talk a little bit about the dividend here. Sure. So as you said, um, Morningstar analysts expect um, cigarette volumes to decline by about 5% a year um, moving forward. However, they also believe that Altria, uh, you know, you have a product where, you know, you're your customers are, are addicted to it. Mm -hmm. uh, they believe Altria should be able to raise its prices in excess of that decline. Uh, so that would allow the firm to continue to increase its revenue, increase its earnings, and then you know, by, therefore be able to keep keep the dividend and actually increase that dividend over time. Um, so looking at the dividend right now, so you know, as you said, over over seven percent. Uh, but the, the payout ratio is fairly high, uh, around 85%, I believe, last year and, and expected to be the same. Uh, so when your, your payout ratio is that high, you don't have a lot of room for maneuverability uh, in, in case of some sort of you know, liquidity crisis or a black swan regulatory event or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, that said, uh, Morningstar analysts believe Altria is very devoted to its dividend. Uh, and would only cut it under the most extreme of circumstances. And they also point out that if it came to that, Altria has a 10% stake in Anheuser-Busch InBev. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it came to it, they could uh, use, use that to uh, provide provide cash to keep the dividend covered if necessary. So David, now Altria's management also released a letter recently about the dividend? Yes, they put out a statement uh, basically saying that looking ahead, they were targeting dividend growth in a sort of uh, mid single digit range. Uh, so, you know, they're certainly hoping to increase the dividend, uh, but it's going to be, you know, a fairly small percentage on an on ongoing basis. So let's turn and talk to, about another, you know, undervalued uh, high dividend stock, and that's Verizon. Uh, we're talking about a 6% forward dividend yield as of today. Um, for the stock, the stock's trading at more than a 30% discount to our analysts. $57 fair value estimate. Of course, Verizon's one of the three biggest US wireless carriers. And you know, while we expect a limited subscriber growth, um, you know, management has said that cash flow growth remains its top priority. So talk a little bit about the dividend here. Sure. So Verizon raised its dividend last year by 2%, uh, and now it can point to 16 consecutive mm -hmm. years of of annual dividend increases, which is a great thing. However, those increases have generally been pretty small. Uh, and I believe Verizon's five-year annualized dividend growth rate is only 2.1%. Uh, so not a lot of dividend growth there. And the primary reason for that is back in 2014, uh, Verizon took on a lot of debt in order to buy out Vodafone uh, from a joint venture uh, that the, the two firms had together. Uh, so basically, you know, Morningstar analysts note that this, uh, this they've got a lot of debt to pay off. They're trying to reduce that leverage. Uh, and Morningstar analysts believe that it's going to you know, just sort of keep them from being able to return uh, much, much cash to shareholders uh, over over the next couple of years. Uh, so we're probably not going to see a lot of near-term dividend growth there. Uh, but as you say, the the share the the yield is up, but that uh, a lot of that simply because of the um, decline in the share price we've seen over the past year or so. Got it, got it. So let's talk about another stock that's really sort of gotten uh, knocked down after the banking crisis, um, and that's Truist Financial, really undervalued. Uh, it's one of the larger regional banks in the United States, and we think that it has carved out a narrow economic moat. Uh, first quarter results showed that there was some earnings pressure building, but our analysts think that it's an amount that's going to be manageable. Um, the stock is more than 40% undervalued as of today, relative to our fair value estimate, and has a forward dividend yield of about 6%. What about this one? Well, sure. You know, we've seen a pretty big drop in Truist's share price of, uh, since March, and that share price drop has pushed um, the yield above mm -hmm. 6%. And as you mentioned, there's there's some earnings pressure there uh, that the bank is going to have to work through, uh, and that could possibly hinder uh, near-term dividend growth. Uh, but, you know, one thing in, in favor of Truist is it's, it's a, as an organization, uh, has expressed a lot of support for the dividend uh, in the past. Uh, back in 2020, the CEO at the time actually said, uh, you know, it was morally right to for the bank to continue to pay its dividend uh, to the investors who, who were depending on the dividend, uh, unless it reached a point where you know regulators would prevent them from doing so. Uh, so that sort of attitude does not in any way guarantee a dividend. 
uh, but it's always it's it's good for income focused investors to see. And uh, in the most recent earnings call, I believe it was April twentieth, uh, the current CEO then again reiterated uh, the the commitment of the firm to the dividend. Great. So there's one last stock we're going to talk about that's undervalued. High dividend, uh, Lloyd's Banking Group. Uh, before we get into the details of that stock, though, I just want to point out that here we're talking about the ADR of a British bank. Right. So let's step back and talk a little bit about what types of things investors should be keeping in mind when investing in dividend paying stocks from non US companies. Sure. So one thing that's different is that, you know, in, in the US, the norm for most dividend paying companies, but not all, is to pay a fixed quarterly dividend. Uh, so, you know, they have a, have a dividend rate, they pay that out for the next four quarters, uh, and then hopefully you'll, you'll get a dividend raise. Uh, outside the U.S., it's not as common, and actually it's very common that you'll have uh, semi-annual dividend payments where a firm will pay a, an interim dividend and then at the end of its fiscal year make a final dividend payment uh, based on, on the results for that year. Uh, so you have, you know, you don't have the four payments a year, uh, so it's just twice a year. And there's also some uncertainty mm -hmm. about how much you're going to receive uh, from your shares. Uh, a couple of other things to point out is that um, you're going to have ADR fees in many cases. So uh, maybe a slight amount of that dividend payment is actually taken away from you as an ADR fee. Uh, and there's also the currency angle. Uh, so if they're paying out the dividend in a British pound or a euro, uh, that has to be, you know, transferred to U.S. dollars. Um, and you know, the U.S. dollar has been very, very strong mm -hmm. uh, over the past year or so. Uh, now it's it's come down a little since it peaked in September. Uh, but there have been cases where non-U.S. dividend payers maintained their dividend or even raised it a little bit. Uh, but U.S. investors saw the you know the final amount they received go down because of that, mm -hmm. th that currency situation. Got it. So let's talk specifically then about Lloyd's. Um, again, it's a pure play UK bank. More than 95% of its assets are invested domestically. Now, our analysts think this is a reasonably lower risk a domestic retail and commercial bank, uh, narrow economic moat rating. Um, now the bank has guided to lower net interest income for 2023. Stocks trading more than 30% below our fair value estimate has uh, over a 4% percent forward dividend yield. What do you think of the dividend? Yeah, well, first a few logistical things. First of all, uh, you know, we were talking about the interim and final dividend payment. Uh, back in 2020, Lloyd's actually announced it was going to move to a quarterly div dividend payment, uh, putting it more in line with the U.S. companies. Uh, There's still going to be a variable element where it would pay a fixed quarterly dividend for the first three quarters of the year, and then its last dividend would be variable based on the fiscal results for the, for the year. Uh, however, before it could commence that new plan, uh, it halted its dividend altogether in 2020. Uh, now, Lloyd's probably had the financial strength to continue its dividend, uh, but this was simply uh, UK banking regulators just put the kibosh on all dividend payments uh, for, for UK banks. Now, Lloyd's reintroduced its dividend in 2021, uh, but they, they went back to this uh, interim final payment. So Lloyd's first payout of 2023 was actually its final dividend uh, for fiscal year 2022. It was more than it paid for its final dividend of 2021. Um, and it looks like the bank is going to be able to pay out, after ADR fees, about $0.11 cents, uh, per ADR share to U.S. investors. And that translates into a yield of around 4.6% uh, for U.S. investors. And that that's certainly more... Uh, of, a, of a yield that you're going to get from any of the big four uh, U.S. banks. I believe uh, three of them, uh, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Wells Fargo, are all yielding around 3% or just slightly below that, while Citigroup uh, is yielding 4% right now. And I want to follow up on the Morningstar analyst take on, on the risk that, that you mentioned. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, Lloyd's is very well capitalized. Uh, the second thing is that uh, one difference between U.S. and U.K. banks is that mortgage, the length of a mortgage in the U.K. tends to be much shorter than the U.S., where we typically have you know, 15 or even 30-year mortgages. Uh, so what that means is the, the banks are less likely to get out of sort of market, market range mm -hmm. in terms of their, of their mortgage exposure, and when interest rates move against them, it's going to do less damage. 
Uh, now, in terms of ongoing dividend growth, uh, management has spoken you know, uh, is supportive of the dividend mm -hmm. and dividend growth. Uh, but last year in an earnings call, the CEO did say uh, when discussing the capital allocation plans for the bank that its institutional shareholders had expressed a strong preference for buybacks mm -hmm. over dividends. Uh, so it seems that maybe, you know, any incremental growth uh, those dollars might be devoted to buybacks as opposed to, to growing the dividend. So David, thank you so much for your time today and your dividend insights into some of these higher yielding dividend paying stocks. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm Susan Javinsky with Morningstar. Thanks for tuning in.